All right, hello everybody. It's the Doctor. Well, welcome back to Let's Play Star Trek Online. Our uh, last final look at the Galaxy Dreadnought. This is the Voth Elite STF, starting with Breach Elite. This is a pug, so you never know what you're going to get. Hopefully this run will go smoothly, but because it's a pug, you never know what will happen. Uh, first thing I start off with is go ahead and launch my fighters, do weapon efficiency. Um, no point in cloaking on this one because you don't really need that yet until we get to the inside of the ship. Um, so yeah, hopefully this will go smooth. Uh, I did pug this earlier and I had a real bad one. Um, as usual, there was somebody who didn't, you know, play. They, some, some people like to camp or um, grief out here. They, they just sit here and let everyone else do the work. I hate when people do that, but uh, that does happen sometimes. So let's see what happens when this thing starts up. We can go ahead and go to full impulse. And we just wait. Pop all my um, pop all my um, shuttles. because this thing's gonna hurt. Now once you popped all that, there's really no reason to worry about the bulwark anymore. Just move on. That, uh, that, those things do a lot of damage. But with this ship, um, we're able to, to do pretty well. When we get to the inside of the ship, that's going to test our maneuverability. And remember, this does have a maneuverability buff because of the two-piece console set I'm rocking. I think reverse, um, reverse shield polarity does a whole lot to help us in that area. fast enough. A 
was trying to get out of the gravity well and I needed to be healing more, a little bit more. This one. on cool down. <laughs> now this is where because I have a cloak I have an advantage so I like to do the good thing here and go save the ships in the back because I have the capability to do that with my cloak I can slip by everybody and I can go right back here to the back and I can save these captured ships. And uh, so if you have a cloak, that's your advantage. Send a rescue team and then close the hangar doors. That's one ship shaved, shaved. One ship shaved, sure. Another ship shaved, sure. Now it's going to swing around and it uh, looks like somebody else got that one, so we're good. All ships shaved, sir. <laughs> but I do want to close hangers, which he did, so we're good. Okay, awesome, awesome. And that's how you play that. Don't repair ship. There's the bull. We'll go see they got a shield facing down. I can get him with my super awesome thing in here, but uh, it looks like I don't need to, so never mind. <laughs> I was going to, but I guess I don't need to. Anyway, that would have been a good situation to use it, it was right there with that um, 
shield facing down on the bulwark. Um, would have been a very easy kill with the uh, phaser lance. Okay, we're doing good. This team is not bad. Not bad at all. They knew to close their hangers. <laughs> That's always a pet peeve of mine because you'll come in here and people will not do that. They leave the hangers open and ships keep coming through and through and through. Alright, now I was talking about turning rate and everything. While I'm in stealth mode, actually, I think my turning rate's even greater. But, uh, look at this. I can turn perfectly well inside this place. Isn't that awesome? A dreadnought. A galaxy. And I'm turning that well inside this place. Definitely, definitely good. Shave the ship. like they saved that one so we're in good shape now this is one situation where I will definitely um, separate my ship because uh, I will need the firepower for this dreadnought Here's the great thing about the new saucer step, is I can pull out of here and uh, now recall my saucer back while I'm flying, while I'm in motion. I don't have to wait for it. I could even go to full impulse if I needed to. And I can also cloak while it's coming back. So that works out really well.
But I can turn well enough. A little close to the wall there, but I can make that turn. Okay, good. Not the right core, not the right core. Bet it's gonna be all the way at the end. Nope, right here. in the middle. I'm never sure where it's at. We'll open the middle just to double check. Yep, that's not the correct one. But somebody shot at it. Science team takes that away, by the way. That's I like science team for this mission for sure. to the main power. inside and I will position myself. I like to stay toward the bottom angled up right at the edge of firing range if I can. That'll help protect you. You won't die or explode as much. You can still, it'll still teleport you every now and then though. chance in this one to use the lance so here it goes didn't do a thing but but I used it
and we escape. That was a very good run of Breach Elite. Definitely I've had worse. That was a very good run. And our ship did quite well. Well, that was neat. Yay, Galaxy Dreadnought is actually a really good ship. I do, uh, there are times uh, though that battle, I wish it had that battle cloak because I'm in red alert and I want to go into um, cloak mode or whatever. Wish it had that. It should have that. I was thinking more about that today and um, that makes sense in that time period when Riker was in control and all good things and they were at war with the um, uh, KDF. You, you saw in that episode that he came out of cloak and they, he was in red alert because he came out of cloak firing the phaser lance. So I think in the episode it kind of maybe looks like maybe it had a battle cloak. Or at least what a battle cloak would be if it were a stow version of a battle cloak. <laughs> okay, well anyway, I'm going to queue up now for... Um, Storming the Spire, Elite, and I don't know how long this is going to take to get in. We'll see. Maybe it'll start right up here. If I'm lucky. Maybe. Am I lucky? Am I lucky? Yeah, am I lucky? Do I have a lucky? Wee! Alright, everybody now has epilepsy. That's awesome. Um, well, maybe, maybe I won't get in as fast as I thought I would. I'll pause the video and uh, I'll restart it once the queue starts up, so hang tight. And literally three seconds after I stopped the video, the queue started. So now we continue with um, the Spire, Storming the Spire Elite, which is my least favorite of them all. And uh, in fact, it does not even reward that as many um, Dyson Marks as the as uh, the Breach Elite does. This one is rather boring. This is very repetitive. Uh, if you fall asleep watching this, you're not the only one, trust me. <laughs> uh, but I do appreciate it if you uh, can stick through this to the end because I will give my summary of this ship. Let's pop that, let's pop that, let's do that. Let's do this and that and that and this. Let's get ready. And let's sit and wait. Oh, that's something new. My troop strength HUD is now in front of... I need to make you higher. Because you're in the way. Okay, there we go. Well, now that's way up here. I'm going to have to rearrange that again all messed up. Whatever. At least I can see everything right now. Ooh, that was nice. Good job there. Okay, let's go to my usual shading spot and protect.
Okay, there we go. Just don't stop. Keep on coming. Come more, it just never ends.
All right. Whew. Can take a second to breathe there. Just a second, though. Got my shuttles waiting. Nice, there comes a transport. That means something will be close by. And it's Sebastian. Another one, and there's more ships already. Warning. Ship is under attack. position over here to take out the shuttles. Finally then we'll be done with this. Why can't I fire on that? For some reason I can't fire on that war repair ship. And we wait. Mm -hmm. 
shuttles are getting by over there, but I can't do anything about that. They're never going to kill the Voth in time. Fifty seconds. Okay, there we go. Storming the Spire Elite completes. So there we go, everybody. That is my complete look at the Galaxy Dreadnought update. Um, I believe that Cryptic has made this ship more appealing than it was in the beginning. And I believe that the bundle is the most appealing offer there. The uh, bundle for 4,000 Zen, you can get all, um, all variants. That bundle right there, you get all variants. And uh, you get the antimatter spread, you get the, um, uh, the saucer separation, and then of course the cloaking device with the dreadnought. You put them all together. And that's the best combination right there because you get these structural enhanced structural systems which gives you more hole plating a better turn rate uh, and then you've got of course a cloak on it and you've got the antimatter spread and you've got saucer separation uh, all of that together makes it a very good ship i of course have said this before there are a few things uh, that i wish it had improved on a little bit more um, secondary Hangar bay, that may seem a little overkill, I don't know, but I think it needs it. Um, I think the, 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 the phaser lance should be a little bit more powerful, I really do. Even though it's okay right now, I really think they should beef up the damage on it a little bit. Because in the show, it took out a Negvar in two shots, and that was with the shields up on the Negvar. So, I don't know, I think it's a little underpowered. I understand that you can't have an op ship in the game, but I still think they could up the damage on it because right now when you fire it on a ship where the shields are really high, it does not do a lot of damage already because those shields really do impact the um, the performance of it. So I think it would be okay to up the, uh, up the damage on it a little bit more. I think it'd be okay to do that. I also wish it had a battle cloak. Um, that's just not a thing. But, you know, overall, other than all that, it's, it's, a, it's a really decent ship. It does well. It, um, it flies well. It, um, you can really customize it in the way that you want with weaponry because it has four forward and four aft. So it's got the full capability of being customized to whatever weapon types you want. It can do cannons. So, I mean, you can, fly, you can use cannons on this thing. That's very versatile. It gives it another option to use. Um... The fleet version goes one step further and gives you a, another tactical console, which I would recommend because it really needs it for the um, for the um, for the damage there. Really, really, really needs it if you're going to use beams for sure. 
uh, but another tactical console, console slot is awesome. The fleet version also has higher hull strength as well. Um, so I would recommend getting, I guess you need the bundle and then the fleet version to have absolutely everything. Um, but I like this ship. It's, it's very good and uh, I recommend it. Unlike the Solon A ships, I really do like this one. I like the updates they've done. I just think they could have gone even one step farther. You know, they kind of went like uh, a half step. They needed to go one, another another half step up, half step up, and then they've got it perfect. But as it is right now, it's not terrible, and it's definitely better than it was when it first came out. It's a it's a worthy update. It could just be updated just a little bit more. But anyway. I think you'll enjoy it just as it is right now as well. It's a, it's a versatile ship and you can do a lot with it. And uh, that's really cool. Oh, and the hangars. You know, I, I, I really cannot wait until I get the yellow stones. I know they're expensive, but those yellow stones, I want to see what those are like. I bet those, uh, bet those shuttles are really awesome. Uh, they're just real expensive. But um, um, this is a ship that I would use long term. This is a ship that uh, Ensign Ricky could use long term. Uh, of course, I'll be testing other ships on him, but you know, I could always come back to the ship later on, and this could be his long term ship. I could see that. I could do that on a Federation character. This is this is not a bad ship to have. So that is my evaluation of this ship. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed all of that and you got to see it in action. Um, I tried to use as many of the powers that I could. The saucer separation is one of those things where some people may use it a lot and some people may not use it at all. I tend to don't use it too much. I only use it in situations where I'm taking down something really big and I need a lot of firepower because it's taken a long time to to wield it down like a like a Voth Dreadnought or the uh, generators beside a, the case gate uh, something like that you know or a gate itself where I need that extra firepower. Otherwise, I like just to keep the ship together. Um, I use the antimatter spread a lot. That really comes in handy. Uh, the, the, the phaser lance, it can work. You just have to use it in the right situation. And that means the shields need to be down on your enemy and you need to get a direct hull hit with it. And then, of course, buff up your power, weapon power and all that as high as you can before you use it. And then use it. And then that's where you're going to do the most damage with it. Um, if the shields are up on the enemy, that's going to absorb a lot of the impact of it. And it's not going to be as useful. Uh, so there you go. Leave your comments. Let me know what you think of the ship. If you're flying it, uh, what your build is like. If you are having fun with it. Um, and if you have any questions, just ask away. And uh, I want to thank everybody for watching these videos. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, there will always, there will be more. I, I don't, uh, actually I do have an idea what the next ship will be. Um, but I'm not going to reveal what that is quite yet. Uh, but I've got several things in mind for what to show. Uh, do I have the Herogen ships to show? No, I don't have those yet. I know the Undine ships are, are right around the corner. They're coming out with Season 9. I do want to do that. But of course I don't have those yet. And it'll probably be a while before I get those. So um, those, those things kind of lockbox ships take a little bit longer because I first have to get the ship, then I have to build a build on it. But getting the ship is the hard part uh, because I don't really do lockboxes and I'm out of energy credits now to buy ships in the store. I don't have any low buy. I don't want to spend mo real money and buy uh, keys to get low buy to get you know, all that kind of stuff. So I don't know how I'm going to get the next round of ships. But when I can, and when I do, I will show them, but it could be a while. Just note, it could be a while before I get those lockbox ships. Uh, those, those take a while. So I may do some other ships that don't require lockboxes. Some other ships I haven't done or shown yet in the game. Uh, and, I, and actually, I'm going back, I'm doing another, I'm doing an interesting build with an Iconian Orb Weaver. Uh, not Iconian, excuse me, Tholian. I don't know why I said Iconian. With an, a uh, Tholian Orb Weaver. And uh, on my science character, and I'm going back and doing like this whole new Kara build where I'm finally using all the new Kara space set and everything on it for the first time. And I'm really enjoying uh, experimenting with that. So that may be uh, an update, an updated ship I can show you in the future as well. 
Um, anyway, there will always be more. I'll do what I can. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next.